Anarchism in France can trace its roots to thinker Pierre Joseph Proudhon, who grew up during the Restoration and was the first self described anarchist. French anarchists fought in the Spanish Civil War as volunteers in the international brigades. According to journalist Brian Doherty, the number of people who subscribed to the anarchist movement's many publications was in the tens of thousands in France alone. From the Second Republic to the Jura Federation Proto-anarchist thinkers appeared during the French Revolution, Sylvain Maréchal, in his Manifesto of the Equals 1796, demanded, "...the communal enjoyment of the fruits of the earth," and looked forward to the disappearance of the revolting distinction of rich and poor, of great and small, of masters and valets, of governors and governed." An early anarchist communist was Joseph Dejac, the first person to describe himself as libertarian. Unlike Proudhon, he argued that it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to, but to the satisfaction of his or her needs, whatever may be their nature. According to the anarchist historian Max Netlau, the first use of the term libertarian communism was in November 1880, when a French anarchist congress employed it to more clearly identify its doctrines. The French anarchist journalist Sébastien Fauré, later founder and editor of the four-volume Anarchist Encyclopédia, started the weekly paper Le Libertaire the Libertarian in 1895. Dejac rejected Blanquism, which was based on a division between the disciples of the great people's architect and the people, or vulgar herd, and was equally opposed to all the variants of social republicanism, to the dictatorship of one man and to the dictatorship of the little prodigies of the proletariat. With regard to the last of these, he wrote that, a dictatorial committee composed of workers is certainly the most conceited and incompetent, and hence the most anti-revolutionary, thing that can be found. It is better to have doubtful enemies in power than dubious friends. He saw anarchic initiative, reasoned will, and the autonomy of each as the conditions for the social revolution of the proletariat, the first expression of which had been the barricades of June 1848. In Dejac's view, a government resulting from an insurrection remains a reactionary fetter on the free initiative of the proletariat. Or rather, such free initiative can only arise and develop by the masses ridding themselves of the authoritarian prejudices by means of which the state reproduces itself in its primary function of representation and delegation. Dejac wrote that, by government I understand all delegation, all power outside the people, for which must be substituted, in a process whereby politics is transcended, the people in direct possession of their sovereignty, or the organized commune. For Dejac, the communist anarchist utopia would fulfill the function of inciting each proletarian to explore his or her own human potentialities, in addition to correcting the ignorance of the proletarians concerning social science. Pierre Joseph Proudhon (1809–1865) was the first philosopher to label himself an anarchist. Proudhon opposed government privilege that protects capitalist, banking, and land interests, and the accumulation or acquisition of property and any form of coercion that led to it, which he believed hampers competition and keeps wealth in the hands of the few. Proudhon favored a right of individuals to retain the product of their labor as their own property, but believed that any property beyond that which an individual produced and could possess was illegitimate. Thus, he saw private property as both essential to liberty and a road to tyranny, the former when it resulted from labor and was required for labor and the latter when it resulted in exploitation, profit, interest, rent, tax. He generally called the former, possession, and the latter, property. For large-scale industry, he supported workers' associations to replace wage labor and opposed the ownership of land. Proudhon maintained that those who labor should retain the entirety of what they produce, and that monopolies on credit and land are the forces that prohibit such. He advocated an economic system that included private property as possession and exchange market but without profit, which he called mutualism. It is Proudhon's philosophy that was explicitly rejected by Joseph de Jacques in the inception of anarchist communism, with the latter asserting directly to Proudhon in a letter that, "...it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to, but to the satisfaction of his or her needs, whatever may be their nature." Joseph de Jacques was a major critic of Proudhon. De Jacques thought that, 
the Proudhonist version of Ricardian socialism, centered on the reward of labor power and the problem of exchange value. In his polemic with Proudhon on women's emancipation, Dejac urged Proudhon to push on as far as the abolition of the contract, the abolition not only of the sword and of capital, but of property and authority in all their forms, and refuted the commercial and wages logic of the demand for a fair reward for labor, labor power. Dejac asked, Am I thus? right to want, as with the system of contracts, to measure out to each according to their accidental capacity to produce what they are entitled to the answer given by dejac to this question is unambiguous it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to but to the satisfaction of his or her needs whatever may be their nature for dejac on the other hand the communal state of affairs the phalanstery without any hierarchy without any authority except that of the statistics book corresponded to natural exchange, i.e. to the unlimited freedom of all production and consumption, the abolition of any sign of agricultural, individual, artistic or scientific property, the destruction of any individual holding of the products of work, the demonarchization and the demonetarization of manual and intellectual capital as well as capital in instruments, commerce and buildings. After the creation of the First International, or International Workingmen's Association IWA, in London in 1864, Mikhail Bakunin made his first tentative of creation an anti-authoritarian revolutionary organization, the «International Revolutionary Brotherhood» Fraternité Internationale Revolutionnaire, or the Alliance «L'Alliance». He renewed this in 1868, creating the «International Brothers» Frères Internationaux or Alliance for Democratic Socialism. Bakunin and other Federalists were excluded by Karl Marx from the IWA at the Hague Congress of 1872, and formed the Jura Federation, which met the next year at the 1873 St. Imier Congress, where was created the Anarchist Street Imier International 1872-1877. Anarchist participation in the Paris Commune In 1870 Mikhail Bakunin led a failed uprising in Lyon on the principles later exemplified by the Paris Commune, calling for a general uprising in response to the collapse of the French government during the Franco-Prussian War, seeking to transform an imperialist conflict into social revolution. In his letters to a Frenchman on the present crisis, he argued for a revolutionary alliance between the working class and the peasantry and set forth his formulation of what was later to become known as propaganda of the deed. Anarchist historian George Woodcock reports that, "...the annual Congress of the International had not taken place in 1870 owing to the outbreak of the Paris Commune, and in 1871 the General Council called only a special conference in London. One delegate was able to attend from Spain and none from Italy, while a technical excuse, that they had split away from the Fédération Romande, was used to avoid inviting Bakunin's Swiss supporters." Thus only a tiny minority of anarchists was present, and the General Council's resolutions passed almost unanimously. Most of them were clearly directed against Bakunin and his followers. In 1872, the conflict climaxed with a final split between the two groups at the Hague Congress, where Bakunin and James Guillaume were expelled from the International and its headquarters were transferred to New York. In response, the Federalist sections formed their own international at the St. Imier Congress, adopting a revolutionary anarchist program. The Paris Commune was a government that briefly ruled Paris from March 18 more formally, from March 28 to May 28, 1871. The Commune was the result of an uprising in Paris after France was defeated in the Franco-Prussian War. Anarchists participated actively in the establishment of the Paris Commune. They included Louise Michel, the Recluse brothers, and Eugene Varlin the latter murdered in the repression afterwards. As for the reforms initiated by the Commune, such as the reopening of workplaces as co-operatives, anarchists can see their ideas of associated labor beginning to be realized. Moreover, the Commune's ideas on federation obviously reflected the influence of Proudhon on French radical ideas. 
Indeed, the Commune's vision of a communal France based on a federation of delegates bound by imperative mandates issued by their electors and subject to recall at any moment echoes Bakunin's and Proudhon's ideas Proudhon, like Bakunin, had argued in favor of the "...implementation of the binding mandate." In 1848, and for federation of communes. Thus both economically and politically the Paris Commune was heavily influenced by anarchist ideas. George Woodcock manifests that a notable contribution to the activities of the Commune and particularly to the organization of public services was made by members of various anarchist factions, including the mutualists Corbett, Longuet, and Vermoral, the libertarian collectivists Varlin, Malin, and Lafrangue, and the Bakuninists Elie and Elisee Recluse and Louise Michel. Louise Michel was an important anarchist participant in the Paris Commune. Initially she worked as an ambulance woman, treating those injured on the barricades. During the Siege of Paris she untiringly preached resistance to the Prussians. On the establishment of the Commune, she joined the National Guard. She offered to shoot Thiers, and suggested the destruction of Paris by way of vengeance for its surrender. In December 1871, she was brought before the Sixth Council of War, charged with offences including trying to overthrow the government, encouraging citizens to arm themselves, and herself using weapons and wearing a military uniform. Defiantly, she vowed to never renounce the commune, and dared the judges to sentence her to death. Reportedly, Michel told the court, since it seems that every heart that beats for freedom has no right to anything but a little slug of lead, I demand my share. If you let me live, I shall never cease to cry for vengeance. Quote. Following the 1871 Paris Commune, the anarchist movement, as the whole of the workers' movement, was decapitated and deeply affected for years. Topic. The propaganda of the deed period and exile to Britain Parts of the anarchist movement, based in Switzerland, started theorizing propaganda of the deed. From the late 1880s to 1895, a series of attacks by self-declared anarchists brought anarchism into the public eye and generated a wave of anxieties. The most infamous of these deeds were the bombs of Ravichol, Emile Henry, and Auguste Valent, and the assassination of the President of the Republic Sadi Carnot by Casario. After Auguste Valent's bomb in the Chamber of Deputies, the «opportunist Republicans» voted in 1893 the first anti-terrorist laws, which were quickly denounced as Lois Scalaret's «villainous laws». These laws severely restricted freedom of expression. The first one condemned apology of any felony or crime as a felony itself, permitting widespread censorship of the press. The second one allowed to condemn any person directly or indirectly involved in a propaganda of the Deed Act, even if no killing was effectively carried on. The last one condemned any person or newspaper using anarchist propaganda and, by extension, socialist libertarians present or former members of the International Workingmen's Association IWA. One either by provocation or by apology anyone who has encouraged one or several persons in committing either a stealing, or the crimes of murder, looting or arson 2. or has addressed a provocation to military from the army or the navy, in the aim of diverting them from their military duties and the obedience due to their chiefs will be deferred before courts and punished by a prison sentence of three months to two years. Thus, free speech and encouraging propaganda of the deed or antimilitarism was severely restricted. Some people were condemned to prison for rejoicing themselves of the 1894 assassination of French President Sadi Carnot by the Italian anarchist Casario. The term of Lois Scalaret's villainous laws has since entered popular language to design any harsh or unjust laws, in particular anti terrorism legislation which often broadly represses the whole of the social movements. The United Kingdom quickly became the last haven for political refugees, in particular anarchists, who were all conflated with the few who had engaged in bombings. Already, the first international had been founded in London in 1871, where Karl Marx had taken refuge nearly 20 years before. But in the 1890s, the UK became a nest for anarchist colonies expelled from the continent, in particular between 1892 and 1895, which marked the height of the repression, with the trial of the 30, taking place in 1884. Louise Michel, a.k.a. the Red Virgin, 
Emile Pouget or Charles Mulatto were the most famous of the many, anonymous anarchists, deserters or simple criminals who had fled France and other European countries. Many of them returned to France after President Félix Faure's amnesty in February 1895. A few hundreds persons related to the anarchist movement would however remain in the UK between 1880 and 1914. The right of asylum was a British tradition since the Reformation in the 16th century. However, it would progressively be eroded, and the French immigrants were met with hostility. Several hate campaigns would be issued in the British press in the 1890s against these French exiles, relayed by riots and a «restrictionist» party which advocated the end of liberality concerning freedom of movement, and hostility towards French and international activists. 1890s to 1914. Le Libertaire, a newspaper created by Sébastien Faure, one of the leading supporters of Alfred Dreyfus, and Louise Michel, alias, The Red Virgin, published its first issue on November 16, 1895. The Confédération Générale du Travail CGT trade union was created in the same year, from the fusion of the various Bourses du Travail, Fernand Pelloutier, the Unions and the Industries Federations. Dominated by anarcho-syndicalists, the CGT adopted the Chart de Mians in 1906, a year after the unification of the other socialist tendencies in the SFIO party French section of the Second International led by Jean Jaurès and Jules Geste. Only eight French delegates attended the International Anarchist Congress of Amsterdam in August 1907. According to historian Jean Maitron, the anarchist movement in France was divided into those who rejected the sole idea of organization, and were therefore opposed to the very idea of an international organization, and those who put all their hopes in syndicalism, and thus, were occupied elsewhere. Only eight French anarchists assisted the Congress, among whom Benoit Brouchou, Pierre Monnet and René de Marmond. A few tentatives of organization followed the Congress, but all were short-lived. In the industrial north, anarchists from Lille, Armentiers, Denons, Lens, Roubaix and Torcoing decided to call for a congress in December 1907, and agreed upon the creation of a newspaper, Le Combat, which editorial board was to act as the informal bureau of an officially non-existent federation. Another federation was created in the Seine and the Seine et Oise in June 1908. However, at the approach of the 1910 legislative election, an anti-parliamentary committee was set up and, instead of dissolving itself afterwards, became permanent under the name of Alliance Communist Anarchist Communist Anarchist Alliance. The new organization excluded any permanent members. Although this new group also faced opposition from certain anarchists including Jean Grave, it was quickly replaced by a new organization, the Fédération Communist Communist Federation. The Communist Federation was founded in June 1911 with 400 members, all from the Parisian region. It quickly took the name of Fédération Anarcho-Communiste Anarcho Federation, choosing Louis Lacoin as secretary. The Fédération Communiste Revolutionnaire Anarchist, headed by Sébastien Faure, succeeded to the FCA in August 1913. The French anarchist milieu also included many individualists. They centered around publications such as L'Anarchie and Endeavours. The main French individualist anarchist theorists were Émile Armand and Han Reiner who also were influential in the Iberian Peninsula. Other important individualist activists included Albert Libertad, André Lorula, Victor Serge, Zoe Daxa and Rorette Maitregine. Influenced by Max Stirner's egoism and the criminal, political exploits of Clement Duval and Marius Jacob, France became the birthplace of illegalism, a controversial anarchist ideology that openly embraced criminality. Relations between individualist and communist anarchists remained poor throughout the pre-war years. Following the 1913 trial of the infamous Bono Gang, the FCA condemned individualism as bourgeois and more in keeping with capitalism than communism. An article believed to have been written by Peter Kropotkin, in the British anarchist paper Freedom, argued that simple-minded young comrades were often led away by the illegalists' apparent anarchist logic, outsiders simply felt disgusted with anarchist ideas and definitely stopped their ears to any propaganda. After the assassination of anti-militarist socialist leader Jean Jaurès a few days before the beginning of World War I, and the subsequent rallying of the Second International and the workers' movement to the war, even some anarchists supported the Sacred Union government. 
Jean Grave, Peter Kropotkin and others published the Manifesto of the Sixteen supporting the Triple Entente against Germany. A clandestine issue of the Libertaire was published on June 15, 1917. Topic. French individualist anarchism From the legacy of Proudhon and Stirner there emerged a strong tradition of French individualist anarchism. An early important individualist anarchist was Anselm Bellegrig. He participated in the French Revolution of 1848, was author and editor of Anarchy, Journal de l'Ordre et au Fait. Au Fait. Interpretation de l'idée démocratique and wrote the important early anarchist manifesto in 1850. Catalan historian of individualist anarchism Xavier Diaz reports that during his travels in the United States, he at least contacted Henry David Thoreau and, probably, Josiah Warren. Autonomy Individual was an individualist anarchist publication that ran from 1887 to 1888. It was edited by Jean-Baptiste Louche, Charles Scheffer and Georges de Hermé. Later, this tradition continued with such intellectuals as Albert Libertad, André Lorula, Émile Armand, Victor Serge, Zoe Daxa and Rorette Maitregine, who developed theory in the main individualist anarchist journal in France, L'Anarchy in 1905. Outside this journal, Han Reiner wrote Petit Manuel Individualist 1903. Later appeared the journal Landhors created by Zoe Daxa in 1891. French individualist circles had a strong sense of personal libertarianism and experimentation. Naturism and free love contents started to have an influence in individualist anarchist circles and from there it expanded to the rest of anarchism also appearing in Spanish individualist anarchist groups. Along with feverish activity against the social order, Albert Libertad was usually also organizing feasts, dances and country excursions, in consequence of his vision of anarchism as the «joy of living» and not as militant sacrifice and death instinct, seeking to reconcile the requirements of the individual in his need for autonomy with the need to destroy authoritarian society. Anarchist naturism was promoted by Henri Zisli, Emile Gravel and Georges Boutard. Boutard was an individualist, partisan of the milieu libres, publisher of Flambeau, quote opening parenthesis quote, an enemy of authority. In 1901 in Vienna, most of his energies were devoted to creating anarchist colonies communites experimentales in which he participated in several. In this sense, the theoretical positions and the vital experiences of French individualism are deeply iconoclastic and scandalous, even within libertarian circles. The call of nudist naturism, the strong defense of bith control methods, the idea of unions of egoists, with the sole justification of sexual practices, that will try to put in practice, not without difficulties, will establish a way of thought and action, and will result in sympathy within some, and a strong rejection within others. Topic. Illegalism Illegalism is an anarchist philosophy that developed primarily in France, Italy, Belgium, and Switzerland during the early 1900s as an outgrowth of Stirner's individualist anarchism. Illegalists usually did not seek moral basis for their actions, recognizing only the reality of might rather than right. For the most part, illegal acts were done simply to satisfy personal desires, not for some greater ideal, although some committed crimes as a form of propaganda of the deed. The illegalists embraced direct action and propaganda by the deed, influenced by theorist Max Stirner's egoism as well as Proudhon, his view that property is theft. Clement Duval and Marius Jacob proposed the theory of la reprise individual eng, individual reclamation, which justified robbery on the rich and personal direct action against exploiters and the system. Illegalism first rose to prominence among a generation of Europeans inspired by the unrest of the 1890s, during which Ravichol, Emile Henry, Auguste Valent, and Casario committed daring crimes in the name of anarchism, in what is known as propaganda of the deed. France's Bono gang was the most famous group to embrace illegalism. Topic. From World War I to World War II After the war, the CGT became more reformist, and anarchists progressively drifted out. 
Formerly dominated by the anarcho syndicalists, the CGT split into a non communist section and a communist confederation general du travail unitaire after the 1920 Tours Congress, which marked the creation of the French Communist Party. A new weekly series of the Libertaire was edited, and the anarchists announced the imminent creation of an anarchist federation. A Union Anarchist group was constituted in November 1919 against the Bolsheviks, and the first daily issue of the Libertaire got out on December 4, 1923. Russian exiles, among them Nestor Makhno and Peter Arshinov, founded in Paris the review Dielo Truda, Delo Truda the Cause of Labor in 1925. Makhno co-wrote and co-published the organizational platform of the Libertarian Communists, which put forward ideas on how anarchists should organize based on the experiences of revolutionary Ukraine and the defeat at the hand of the Bolsheviks. The document was initially rejected by most anarchists, but today has a wide following. It remains controversial to this day, some including, at the time of publication, Volin and Malatesta viewing its implications as too rigid and hierarchical. Platformism, as Makhno's position came to be known, advocated ideological unity, tactical unity, collective action and discipline, and federalism. 500 people attended Makhno's 1934 funeral at the Per Lachaise. In June 1926, the Organizational Platform Project for a General Union of Anarchists, best known under the name, Arkhanov's Platform, was launched. Volin responded by publishing a synthesis project in his article. Le problème organisational et l'idée de synthèse. The organisational problem and the idea of a synthesis. After the Orléans Congress, July 12 to 14, 1926, the Anarchist Union UA transformed itself into the Communist Anarchist Union (UAC), Union Anarchist Communist. The gap widened between proponents of platformism and those who followed Volin's synthesis anarchism. The Congress of the Fédération Autonome du Batiment November 13 to 14, 1926 in Lyon created the CGT Senior Confédération Générale du Travail Syndicaliste Révolutionnaire with help from members of the Spanish Confédération Nationale del Trabajo CNT which prompted the CGT's revolutionary syndicalists to join it. Julian Tublet became the new trade union secretary. Le Libertaire became again a weekly newspaper in 1926. At the Orléans Congress of October 31 and November 1, 1927, the UAC became platformist. The minority of those who followed Volin split and create the Association des Federalistes Anarchistes AFA, which diffused the trait d'union libertaire then la voie libertaire. Some synthesists later rejoined the UAC in 1930, which took the initiative of a congress in 1934 to unite the anarchist movement on the basis of anti-fascism. The Congress took place on 20 and 21 May 1934, following the February 6, 1934 far-right riots in Paris. All of the left-wing feared a fascist coup d'état, and the anarchists were at the spearhead of the anti-fascist movement. The AFA dissolved itself the same year, and joined the new group, promptly renamed Union Anarchist. However, a Fédération Communiste Libertaire later created itself after a new split in the UA. Anarchists then participated in the general strikes during the Popular Front 1936-38 which led to the Matignon Accords 40 hours week, etc. headed by Léon Blum. The Popular Front did not intervene in the Spanish Civil War, because of the radicals' presence in the government. Thus, Blum blocked the brigades from crossing the borders and sent ambulances to the Spanish Republicans, while Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini were sending men and weapons to Francisco Franco. In the same way, Blum refused to boycott the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, and to support the People's Olympiad in Barcelona. Some anarchists became members of International Antifascist Solidarity Solidarité Internationale Antifascist, which helped volunteers illegally cross the border, while others went to Spain and joined the Derudi Column's French-speaking contingent, the Sebastian Faure Century. A Fédération Anarchiste de Langue Française FAF developed from a split in the UA, and denounced the collusion between the French anarchists with the Popular Front, as well as criticizing the CNTFAI's participation to the Republican government in Spain. The FAF edited Terra Libre, in which Volin collaborated. Before World War II, there are two organizations, the Union Anarchiste UA, which had as its newspaper Le Libertaire, and the Fédération Anarchiste Française FAF, which had the Terra Libre newspaper. 
However, to the contrary of the French Communist Party PCF, which had organized a clandestine network before the war Édouard Daladier's government even had made it illegal after the Molotov–Ribbentrop Pact, the anarchist groups lacked any clandestine infrastructure in 1940. Hence, as all other parties a part of the PCF, they quickly became completely disorganized during and after the Battle of France. Under Vichy After Operation Barbarossa and the Allies' landing in North Africa, Marshal Philippe Pétain, head of the new French state Vichy regime which had replaced the French Third Republic, saw the bad wind approaching. Le mauvais vent s'approcher. The resistance began to start organizing itself in 1942-1943. Meanwhile, the French police, under the orders of René Bousquet and his second-in-command, Jean Leguet, systematically added to the list of targets designed by the Gestapo communists, Freemasons and Jews the anarchists. On 19 July 1943, a clandestine meeting of anarchist activists took place in Toulouse, they spoke of the Fédération Internationale Syndicaliste Revolutionnaire. On January 15, 1944, the new Fédération Anarchiste decided on a charter approved in Agen on October 29-30, 1944. Decision was taken to publish clandestinely Le Libertaire as to maintain relations. Its first issue was published in December 1944. After the liberation, the newspaper again became a bi-weekly, and on October 6-7, 1945, the Assises du Mouvement Libertaire were held. The Fourth Republic 1945-1958 The Fédération Anarchiste FA was founded in Paris on December 2, 1945, and elected Georges Fontenis as its first secretary the next year. It was composed of a majority of activists from the former FA which supported Voline's synthesis and some members of the former Union Anarchist, which supported the CNTFAI support to the Republican government during the Spanish Civil War, as well as some young resistance. A youth organization of the FA the Yoynesses Libertaires was also created. A part of some individualist anarchists grouped behind Émile Armand, who published Lunique and Landhors, and some pacifists Louvet and Mail who published A Contra Current, the French anarchists were thus united in the F.A. Furthermore, a confederate structure was created to coordinate publications with Louvet and C. E. Kiel Faux Dyer newspaper, the anarcho-syndicalist minority of the reunited CGT gathered into the Fédération Syndicaliste Française FSF, they represented the «Action Syndicalist» current inside the CGT, and Le Libertaire newspaper. The FSF finally transformed itself into the actual Confédération Nationale du Travail CNT on December 6, 1946, adopting the Paris Charter and publishing Le Combat Syndicaliste. The Confédération Nationale du Travail CNT, or National Confederation of Labour was founded in 1946 by Spanish anarcho-syndicalists in exile with former members of the CGT Senior. The CNT later split into the CNT Viol and the CNT 8, which is the French section of the IWA. The anarchists started the 1947 insurrectionary strikes at the Renault factories, crushed by Interior Minister Socialist Jules Mock, whom created for the occasion the Compagnie's Républicains de Sécurité (CRS) riot police. Because of the CNT's inner divisions, some FA activists decided to participate to the creation of the reformist CGT foe, issued from a split within the communist-dominated CGT. The FA participated to the International Anarchist Congress of Puto in 1949, which gathered structured organizations as well as autonomous groups and individuals from Germany, USA, Bolivia, Cuba, Argentina, Peru and elsewhere. Some communist anarchists organized themselves early in 1950 in a fraction, named Organisation Ponce Bataille OPB, which had as aim to impose a single political stance and centralize the organization. The GAAP groups Anarchistes de Action Proletarienne were created on February 24-25, 1951, in Italy by former members of the FAI excluded at the Congress of Ancone. The same year, the FA decides, on a proposition from the Louise Michel group animated by Maurice Joyeux, to substitute individual vote to the group vote. The adopted positions gain federalist status, but are not imposed to individuals. Individualists opposed to this motion failed to block it. Oat frequents, 
A Surrealist Manifest was published in Le Libertaire on July 6, 1951. Some Surrealists started working with the F.A. Furthermore, the Mouvement Independent des Auberges de Yoines (MIAJ), Independent Movement of Youth Hostels, was created at the end of 1951. On 1950 a clandestine group formed within the F.A. called Organisation Ponce Bataille led by George Fontanese. The OPB pushed for a move which saw the F.A. change its name into the Fédération Communiste Libertaire FCL after the 1953 Congress in Paris, while an article in Le Libertaire indicated the end of the cooperation with the French Surrealist group led by André Breton. The FCL regrouped between 130 and 160 activists. The new decision-making process was founded on unanimity, each person has a right of veto on the orientations of the Federation. The FCL published the same year the Manifest du Communisme Libertaire. The FCL published its «Workers» program in 1954, which was heavily inspired by the CGT's revendications. The Internationale Communiste Libertaire (ICL), which groups the Italian GAAP, the Spanish Ruta, and the Movement Libertaire Nord Africain (MLNA), North African Libertarian Movement, was founded to replace the Anarchist International, deemed too reformist. The first issue of the monthly Monde Libertaire, the news organ of the FA, which would be published until 1977, came out in October 1954. Several groups quit the FCL in December 1955, disagreeing with the decision to present «revolutionary candidates» to the legislative elections. On August 15–20, 1954, the Ve Intercontinental Plenum of the CNT took place. A group called Entente Anarchist appeared which was formed of militants who didn't like the new ideological orientation that the OPB was giving the FCL seeing it was authoritarian and almost Marxist. The FCL lasted until 1956 just after it participated in state legislative elections with ten candidates. This move alienated some members of the FCL and thus produced the end of the organization. A group of militants who didn't agree with the FA turning into FCL reorganized a new federation anarchist which was established in December 1953. This included those who formed L'Entente Anarchist who joined the new FA and then dissolved L'Entente. The new base principles of the FA were written by the individualist anarchist Charles Auguste Bontemp and the non-platformist anarcho-communist Maurice Joyeux which established an organization with a plurality of tendencies and autonomy of group organized around synthesis principles. According to historian Cédric Guérin, "...the unconditional rejection of Marxism became from that moment onwards an identity element of the new federation anarchist." And this was motivated in a big part after the previous conflict with George Fontanese and his OPB. Also it was decided to establish within the organization a committee of relations composed of a general secretary, a secretary of internal relations, a secretary of external relations a committee of redaction of Le Monde Libertaire and a committee of administration. On 1955 a commission on syndicalist relations was established within the FA as proposed by anarcho-syndicalist members, regrouping behind Robert and Bolatin. Some activists of the former Entente Anarchist quit the FA and created on November 25, 1956 in Bruxelles the AOA Alliance Ouvrière Anarchist, which edited Lanarchy and would drift to the far right during the Algerian War. The French Surrealist group led by André Breton now openly embraced anarchism and collaborated in the Fédération Anarchiste. In 1952 Breton wrote, "...it was in the black mirror of anarchism that surrealism first recognized itself." Breton was consistent in his support for the Francophone Anarchist Federation and he continued to offer his solidarity after the platformists around Fontenay's transformed the Fédération Anarchist into the Fédération Communiste Libertaire. He was one of the few intellectuals who continued to offer his support to the FCL during the Algerian War when the FCL suffered severe repression and was forced underground. He sheltered Fontenay's whilst he was in hiding. He refused to take sides on the splits in the French anarchist movement and both he and Perret expressed solidarity as well with the new Fédération anarchist set up by the synthesis anarchists and worked in the anti-fascist committees of the 60s alongside the Fédération anarchist. The Fifth Republic and May 1968 
An uprising and general strike of students and workers in May 1968 in Paris and subsequently spreading to the rest of the country was led in part by some anarchists, including Daniel Cohn Bendit. He joined the larger and classic nationwide anarchist federation Fédération Anarchiste, which he left in 1967 in favor of the smaller and local group Anarchist de Nanterre and the Noir et Rouge magazine. Daniel Guérin was an anarchist author, best known for his work Anarchism, From Theory to Practice, as well as his collection No Gods No Masters, an anthology of anarchism in which he collected writings on the idea and movement it inspired, from the first writings of Max Stirner in the mid-19th century through the first half of the 20th century. He is also known for his opposition to Nazism, fascism and colonialism, in addition to his support for the Confederación Nacional del Trabajo CNT during the Spanish Civil War, and his revolutionary defense of free love and homosexuality he was bisexual. In 1959, by publishing Youth of Libertarian Socialism he began his involvement with anarchism. Guérin belonged to several anarchist communist organizations, the Aura Anarchist Revolutionary Organization, from 1971 to 1977, the UTCL Union of the Libertarian Communist Workers, from 1979 to his death in 1988 in 1991, the UTCL became Alternative Libertaire. The Situationist International was one influence in the 1950s. Anarchists participated in the riots and strikes of May 1968, and then in the autonomist movement. They were also largely present in new social movements, as well as in prisoners' movements such as the Group Information Prisons GIP, founded by Michel Foucault and Daniel Defert. In the 1980s, they became involved in the struggle against expulsion of illegal aliens. During the events of May 68 the anarchist groups active in France were Fédération Anarchiste, Mouvement Communiste Libertaire, Union Fédérale des Anarchistes, Alliance Ouvrière Anarchiste, Union des Groupes Anarchistes Communistes, Noir et Rouge, Confédération Nationale du Travail, Union Anarcho-Syndicaliste, Organisation Révolutionnaire Anarchiste, Cahiers Socialistes Libertaires, A Contra Current, La Révolution Proletarienne, and the publications close to Émile Armand. In 1968, the International of Anarchist Federations was founded during an international anarchist conference in Carrara in 1968 by the three existing European federations of the French FA, the Italian Federazione Anarchica Italiana and the Iberian Anarchist Federation as well as the Bulgarian Federation in French exile. In the 70s the FA evolved into a joining of the principles of both synthesis anarchism and platformism. Today the FA is constituted of about 100 groups around the country. It publishes the weekly Le Monde Libertaire and runs a radio station called Radio Libertaire. Topic: Notable names within French anarchism. See also category French anarchists. Pierre Joseph Proudhon, 1809 to 1865, philosopher. Joseph Dejac, 1821 to 1864. Anselm Bellegrigue Louise Michel, 1830 to 1905, school teacher and communard. Elise Recluse, 1830 to 1905, geographer. Peter Kropotkin, 1842 to 1921. He was not French, but he spent a long time in France. Georges Sorel, 1847 to 1922. Nestor Macnoe, 1888 to 1934. He was not French, but he died in Paris. 500 persons were at his funeral at the Perlachaise Cemetery. Jean Grave, 1854-1939 Sebastian Faure, 1858-1942 Han Reiner, 1861-1938 Zoe Daxa, 1864-1930 Emile Armand, 1872-1963 Albert Libertad 1875 to 1908 Jules Bono 1876 to 1912 illegalist Marius Jacob 1879 to 1954 Charles Auguste Bontemps 1893 to 1981 writer and activist Daniel Guerin 1904 to 1988 anarcho-communist writer Jean Matron 1910 to 1987 historian specialized in the labor movement Maurice Joyeux 1910 to 1991 activist and organizer of French Anarchist Federation 
Jacques Ellul 1912 philosopher, law professor, sociologist, theologian, and Christian anarchist Albert Camus 1913 writer and philosopher Leo Ferre 1916 singer-songwriter and poet Georges Fontenis 1920 Alexander Grothendieck 1928 to 2014 Michel Onfray 1959 philosopher Topic List of French libertarian organizations Action Direct Endeavors individualist anarchist 1891 Bono Gang illegalist 1911 Fédération Anarchiste Synthesist, 1945, member of International of Anarchist Federations L'Anarchy Individualist Anarchist, 1905 CNTF Revolutionary Syndicalist, 1945 CNT8 Anarcho Syndicalist, 1945 http cnt aitinfo English section of the website Libertarian Communist Organization, France, OCL, Platformist, 1976. Anarchists Union, 1979. CLODO, 1980. No Scalp, Anti-Fascist, 1984. Alternative Libertaire, 1991, Platformist member of the Anarchismo. Topic. See also. French Left Death to the Brutes, an anti-war anarchist poster printed in France during the Second World War. The Coming Insurrection, an eclectic amalgamation of post-situationist and anarcho-communist ideas attributed to the Tarnak Nine Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Barry, David. A History of the French Anarchist Movement, 1917–1945. Greenwood Press, 2002. New Edition AK Press, 2009. Carr, Reg. Anarchism in France, The Case of Octave Mirbeau. Montreal, 1977. Freemian, Yves. L'Anarchist, Le Faire Paris, 1999. Matron, Jean. Histoire du mouvement anarchiste en France 1880 to 1914 1st ed. SUDEL, Paris, 1951, 744p, redition in two volumes by François Maspero, Paris, 1975, and redition Gallimard Merriman, John. Dynamite Club, How a Bombing in Fin de siècle Paris Ignited the Age of Modern Terror. Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, 2009. NATAF, André. La vie quotidienne des anarchistes en France, 1880–1910. Paris, 1986. Patsoras, Louis. The Anarchism of Jean Grave. Montreal, 2003. Shea, Gregory. How to Make an Anarchist Terrorist, an Essay on the Political Imaginary in Fin de siècle France. Journal of Social History 44, 2010, online. Son, Richard D. Anarchism and Cultural Politics in Fin de siècle France. University of Nebraska Press. 1989. Son, Richard D. Sex, Violence, and the Avant-Garde, Anarchism in Interwar France. Penn State Press, 2010. Varias, Alexander. Paris and the Anarchists. New York, 1996. Topic. Further reading. Topic. External links Non-Fides, Anarchist Portal Francophone Anarchist Federation CNT France Viol. CNT France 8. Radio Libertaire Le Monde Libertaire The French Anarchist Movement by Giovanna Berneri Cédric Guerra Pensez et action des anarchistes en France, 1950–1970. Article on the history of French anarchism in the period 1950–1970 in French Anarchy Archives. <laughs>